is Proverbs, um, rather Philippians 4, verses 6 through 8. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. We have a powerful message today for a powerful people. This is a special one-hour program, and we will be here um, today and throughout the rest of the week. Um, from the hours of 8 to 9 a.m. right here on WEHA 88.7 and 99.9 FM. And we're going to discuss the reported closing of three Atlantic City casinos, the loss of 7,000 jobs, and the impact on families and, and the area economy. And uh, so we'll have special guests all week from the affected workers from local before, uh, local elected officials, area pastors, and others who will help to shed light on the issues and give important information to us so that we can all better understand the issue and its impact on the area economy and more importantly to help all of us to help our neighbors and friends through this very tough time. My producer today is Deacon William Hawks and um, so we have a powerful program today. I have in the studio with me three uh, very fine guests. Um, Pastor Dolores Dixon and uh, Bill Hughes, who is a Democrat candidate for Congress. Congress, all right, and uh, U.S. Congress. I, I I try to demote you, but that's not actually that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> and also, my friend uh, Roy Foreman is with us today as well. And we've been we've been off air having a very good uh, discussion and dialogue. And you know what? It's just a shame to waste all that good information. <laughs> off air, we had a really really great conversation. Now on yesterday. Um, we had started the program off yesterday, this special series of programs dealing with this uh, very important issue. I had on yesterday Dr. Rick Beniciero of Atlanta Cape Community College, as well as Bob McDevitt, president of Local 54, and my friend Reverend McGettigan. And we talked about, um, kind of laid the, tried to lay uh, out some facts and give some context to this whole thing to help people better understand what the issues are. And today we're going to continue to talk about that and kind of talk about what we, we, we established that the casinos, the original uh, intent of the casinos in New Jersey, legislature had approved uh, casino gambling in New Jersey um, for the purpose, one of the purposes was, the primary purpose was urban renewal, to address the issue of urban renewal. Um, that was kind of the, the reason that folk had agreed to it. Even, uh, I talked yesterday too about the, uh, the, the social contract that was uh, either implied or, or, or in fact, where even in the area where, where even clergy, I talked about the fact that clergy in, this, in the Atlantic City area in particular, uh, perhaps were, um, did not object to casinos and other people who may have object, objected to gambling on some social or religious moral reasoning had basically did not object and agreed because of the exchange, the promise of jobs, the promise of um, what was to come. And here we are 30 years later, and I think that we need to revisit some of that and ask some questions as to whether or not you know, we, those obligations were met. Uh, and um, Bill Hughes, I want you to start off and just kind of give us some, some context. But of course, you're, you're, I guess your dad was around then. Yes, he was. <laughs> and, and no doubt played a very major, played some role in this whole thing. And it plays play, a major role in this. And, and so from your perspective, that's, I want to focus on for a minute, let's focus on um, CREDA and the way the, 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 the monies are directed and, um, and what, you know, we, we talk a little bit off air. Kind of well, you know, what, what we were talking about is the, this CREDA fund, which was a portion of the, which was a portion of the, uh, the casino revenues mm -hmm. that are de were supposed to be devoted into a fund that would be dispersed for uh, redevelopment projects mm -hmm. and for urban renewal uh, in the Atlantic City and, and the area. And this was something, a, a partnership with the casinos. 
um, that they would identify those projects that they, that um, the agency, uh, a quasi independent agency, would invest in in the area that would benefit uh, Atlantic City and Southern New Jersey in general. Mm -hmm. uh, over time, uh, this fund grew rather large, and uh, and politicians throughout the state began to eye it and. Uh, you know, there was a point in time where those monies uh, found their way in projects throughout the entire state of New Jersey and not just in Atlantic City and Southern New Jersey. And that's presented a problem for us because now they're talking about casino gaming in North Jersey, which I, you know, I think is a mistake and it, it, it absolutely should not be done. Um, but, you know, the question remains is that, you know, there were, there was a lot of money and I think it's upward in billions of dollars went to uh, other places throughout New Jersey. You know, how does Atlantic City get some of that money back? Okay, so are you suggesting that Atlantic City was supposed, initially was the priority? At least, if, if not exclusive, it certainly should have had priority. For Creta, it always was. Okay. For Creta, it always was. It was a, it was a fund that was, that was for the redevelopment of Atlantic City, it was to benefit Atlantic City. And this was, a, 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 the, you know, the first of the public-private partnerships because the, the casinos were to have a, a part in, you know, because this was some of their revenues mm -hmm. going into projects that was supposed to benefit Atlantic City. And, you know, the better Atlantic City looks, mm -hmm. the more attractive it is, mm -hmm. the more people that want, want, want to come here. So this, you know, this was the idea behind Creta, and Creta under now under John Palmieri, you know, they are, you know, they are doing what they are supposed to do, identifying those projects that are that are supposed to benefit uh, the community. They've gotten back to basics, and and that's a and, and that's a, a great thing, but um, but you know, right now, uh, as we were talking about off of the air, we need to I identify, you know and prioritize how those monies are supposed to be used. Right. Um, I'm going to take a call. I have a call on, and uh, let's bring the call on. I, I want to continue along that line and talk about just that, what you just mentioned about um, rethinking. I want Pastor Dixon to chime in on that, talking about getting pastors together, and, and uh, which I'm doing presently, and organizing the group to uh, approach Creta and the state legislature and talk about some immediate relief for folk who are emergency immediate relief for folk who are suffering right now in terms of a place to stay, et cetera, in light of Sandy and all the other uh, complications, the, compound, the, uh, the compounding uh, uh, issues that, that have uh, occurred and just have made this, made this problem devastating for a lot of families. So I want to get to that in a minute. But let me, let's go to our caller. We have a caller here right now. Caller, are you there? Hi. Good morning. How are you? Wonderful. Your name is? Dawn French. Hi, Dawn. Okay, well, great. I'm, I'm happy to have shook your hand, Dawn. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Um, so, Dawn, you, you, then you are an employee of Local 54. I mean, you are a union member, correct? Yes. All right. And um, what's what's your story, Dawn? I mean, how, how, how do you figure... I'm glad you called in because I wanted to hear from um, actual people who are directly impacted and kind of hear your story and, and, and what, uh, what options you may be looking at presently as you go forward. Um, you know, you have a home, you have a family and all those kind of things. Tell, me, tell your story a little bit. Um, what can I ask? What you do? Either, either of you can jump in at any time. Point. I have a question for Dawn. What, can I ask? What do you do in the casino, Dawn? Okay. 
All right, so, um, and what options, what, if in the event that the casino that you work for is sold or is closed and you're out of, you're unemployed for a period of time, unemployed, unemployed for a period of time, what plans do you have? Any immediate plans? And which casino do you work for? Uh, we work for Okay. All right. Well, uh, mm -hmm. Well, Dawn, we certainly are uh, praying with you and, and supporting uh, the workers uh, through this uh, situation and um, you know, our prayers are with you and your family and hopefully and if there's anything we can do, we're going to certainly try and make uh, be a part of it. And uh, the community is rallying, so you guys should uh, keep the faith and uh, know that you've got the support of this community. Thank you. All right. My pleasure. God bless you. And I think we have another call on the line. Uh, hello? Caller, are you there? Hi. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good. And your name is? My name is Michelle Jackson. Okay. Michelle, and you also a uh, member of Local 54, I believe? Yes, I am. Okay. And, and uh, what, what's your story, Michelle? And uh, you have uh, children? I have a nine-year-old son. Okay. And um, do you have any uh, immediate plans in the unlikely uh, event that uh, Chobo closes? Okay. Well, you got to keep the faith. You sound like you're you're, you're being positive and uh, keep the faith. And uh, certainly we are, um, all of us, this community is very, very happy and proud to rally around, rally uh, in support of uh, the workers and Local 54. And uh, you guys keep doing what you do, and we're going to keep doing what we do, and that's giving you support. Absolutely. Yeah, we have a, a lot of reason to be proud. And also the, the union and, and, and your president, Bob McDevitt, you guys, uh, you guys have got a, a real champion there and, and fighting a good battle. So we are praying for you and praying for uh, all of you all in this whole situation. And, and uh, so hang in there and keep the faith. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. All right. So, there, you know, I think that we have got some, um, you know, some real people issues. And that, that's why I had made reference to the fact that uh, with, you know, I had, um, I was talking with um, uh, some of the freeholders, and and I just was telling them about this challenge and my thinking about it and all of that. And it's not political, and I'm not really in so much in the interested in the war or supporting the war as I am supporting the soldiers, the employees, and those who are going to be devastated by it. Um, and that and that are real stories. And I shared yesterday. I've had uh, a person, many people. One in particular, on this week, had come to me and said that works for one of the casinos, has um, five children, and lives in one of the uh, 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 properties on 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 the Pike, uh, displaced by Sandy, has to be out of that place, you know, immediately, and cannot find help anywhere, no county help, state help, uh, just nothing. And what do you do for people people in those kinds of um, facing those kind of circumstances? Because that's the real story, Pastor Dixon. Praise God. Well, 
uh, we have seen and we have experienced many, many people with this dilemma. Just uh, recently on Sunday, we had someone come through that has been homeless since March. And we literally had to raise an offering mm -hmm. to help them out. But it was wonderful because it was timely because we had someone in the congregation that had a house mm. for them to go and live in. So in a few days they'll be able to have a house. But my message on Sunday night was get me to the church on time. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to do. We're going to have to seek, turn back to God because systems are failing. And we have to look to the higher power. Amen. We're going to have to look to God because, and I like to share, if you don't mind, I like to share a scripture. So I'm going to, I'm coming to you from a kingdom aspect today, the kingdom of heaven as a kingdom representative, as a kingdom ambassador. I represent the God of heaven. A man who is control of everything. He made the people. He made the land. He said the silver, silver is gold, and gold is mine. And the cattle on a thousand hill belongs to me. When my husband fell unemployed. Amen. Because Creta took the properties. And he had no job. And we had just bought a house. And he said what am I going to do? Well he had to settle for less. But guess what? God came through and the house got paid for. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Amen. Mm -hmm. Every time we faced a dilemma where all doors were shut, God created a door mm -hmm. because God created everything. He created the world out of, of nothing, ex nihilo, meaning he needed nothing to create it with. And that's the way it's going to be for, for the people today. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to resort back to God. Amen, because Atlantic City is going to be a resort. Mm -hmm. So you lived in Atlantic City. And I'm you, a citizen. You said okay, and, and you said I think I heard you say that your 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 property was taken by eminent domain. The Creta business. Oh, your okay, your the business was taken, by, yes. okay, was taken by eminent domain. Okay, taken by eminent domain. Okay, so that's another so, story. That's different. Okay. Where where was the business located? Uh, uh, right behind, I think it was right behind resorts, right in that area. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, but God came through every time. Every yeah. sing, I've never seen God fail. And that's a story we have that we, we want folk who are, to those um, uh, union folk who are listening, we want them to know that, uh, of course, um, it's, unfortunately, when you go through these challenges, and everybody does, and, and uh, these problems are not new, uh, but God will bring you through. There's a way out, there's a way through. And what I want, what, I'm, what I feel led to do is, uh, back to Pastor Dixon's um, point earlier, of course, we have a kingdom perspective, and I believe that that's why I believe that the, the church and the religious and the faith community has to speak um, truth to power, um, number one, and also uh, comfort people, certainly through ministry, and meet physical and natural needs. So we have to be a part of this whole equation, and uh, that's what this is really all about. Uh, you want to read the scripture? Read the scripture. Yes, I want to read the scripture. It says, Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondsmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in thine house? And she said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shall pour into all those vessels. Thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her. And she poured out and it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, there is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil, 
and pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children of the rest. So uh, because she sought God and got some instructions from God, God sustained her and gave her just what she needed. Her bills were met. Mm. And I have many, many testimonies of how God has done just that. There have been many times I've been down to my last time. People are going to be in trouble. People are going to be in dilemma, mm -hmm. in dilemma mm -hmm. and depression. But I say again, the source is in God. They're going to have to look to God. Yes, look to the officials and pray. Pray that funds are released. Pray that they'll do the right thing with the money that I was told has been released into the city. But will they do the right thing is the question. Are they going to do other things with the money? Or are they going to really help the people? Mm -hmm. This is what our prayer is. We're praying that the monies be released. We have people that are on welfare living off of 30 something dollars. We're literally taking care of people out of the church. I think we all can, you know, every, every church and, uh, uh, and, and, and non-profit agency, um, and right now even the, the government, the county government, uh, every, every resource has been stretched to its absolute end, and that's why we need to kind of rethink everything and, 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 and make this appeal to um, the powers that be, legislature, etc., to rethink how things are being done, at least for a immediate temporary type basis so that we can help folk get through some challenging times. Uh, and we got another, we got brother, brother Roy Foreman here today also, and Roy was with me all last week. Roy came to town some years ago um, as for, for business purposes in the boxing arena, and um, we saw how boxing went that way. And uh, so, and we talked last week, Roy, about the, about some things you have been thinking about uh, in terms of bringing back another type of industry, revitalizing the, the, the boxing industry. Perhaps. Well, you know, Atlantic City, I, I'm one of the people that was, I guess, a, a, a benefactor of when Atlantic City first started. Uh, it was the first few years, especially about the first 10 or 12 years of here, because as uh, Bill said earlier, money was just flowing. Mm -hmm. And the people of the people that were in control. They understood that we have to keep these things going in order to make this city continue to grow. I always believe that every plan that they make, there's a plan for the plan that they plan. We may not realize it. <laughs> I mean, we may not realize it, but they, somebody five or six years ago knew where we were coming, that this city was going to come into the situation that it is now. Now, would the advantages be that we can get properties for little or nothing? Because it's one thing for someone to buy the Atlantic City. I mean, I'm sorry, what is the casino? Uh, Revel, as we talk, mm -hmm. starting at $50 million, which is probably wind up going for about $200 million bucks, I believe, because it's a valuable property. But what is going to be the difference if they get the hands of that property and there's not a plan that's laid out? Now, I know Bill's running for U.S. congressman. Mm -hmm. So he has a heck of a job on his hands because people are going to ask him this question every time. Mm -hmm. uh, what, you know, what's your plan for helping Atlantic City, Atlantic County. We did that. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't yeah. that. He's burning <laughs> that question. That's why but he's here. <laughs> I mean, because the ones that are mostly affected, and I live in Galloway, and I, you know, we bought there, when we, like you said, we, my wife and I, we moved there, and we, we loved the area, and we came from Houston, and even though I go back and forth. So I've seen the transitions, and I can remember when uh, they tried to, and he talked about moving people out of Atlantic City, and they tried that. They wanted to give them, uh, they offered townships like Galloway monies. They turned it down because they didn't want it. And I think they wound up going to Violin. I'm not sure where that whole thing wound up at. But we. So they called RCAs. Right? Yes, right. We, that, 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 right. And, and you and I talked about that years ago, as a matter of fact. So they knew what was going to happen here now. If there's not a plan laid down, people, I mean, you may as well forget. Anything that's going, because nothing's going to change. What's the sense in getting a property? All those people are going to be out of work. You got people in properties. There's only so many jobs here, regardless. Mm -hmm. So what has to happen? And and I've been trying to get to the mayor, because projects give people ways to make money. Right. And boxing made an awful lot of money for this town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I know it did. The drops were crazy. I mean. During the course of weeks, you know, you, you talked about sixty-five, seventy hundred million dollars sometimes coming to Atlantic City, mm -hmm. and I can agree that taxes has had a lot to do with 
this state too. And just like other things, we need to start looking at abatements for a lot of different things. They had a concert here this past weekend, I think it was, Thursday, Friday, I was away, but they had a concert here. They said about that over 60,000 people came here. That wasn't just for gaming. Those are the kind of things that we've got to reach into to help a lot of these people. More, more, more free concerts. More free concerts. <laughs> you know, I mean, more things. I mean, because people will come for free and they will spend money. They will spend money. They will spend money. So, yeah, so your point is about. you got to get folks down. You now, get folk I, I, I want, now, we talk, we're talking about options and going forward. So you, from a biblical perspective, talked about the, 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 the man of God giving uh, the woman, the widow, an, an alternative. You're talking about bringing... Um, different industry to town, Roy, and I know um, Bill is here. I asked him to come because I want to talk about. I want to hear um, options from persons who are uh, elected officials and those who would like to be uh, elected officials. Well, we'll take a quick break. We're going to come back, and I want Bill Hughes to talk about uh, his plan for um, how we get out of this mess. <laughs> All right. So uh, fair hey, enough. Here. We'll be back in about two minutes. Hang yeah. here. And welcome back to Between the Headlines with Bishop John Gandhi. Uh, we are here this morning, um, and we'll be here for the rest of the week, between the hours of 8 and 9 a.m. for the special edition. And these programs are uh, focused specifically on the uh, issue of the anticipated reported closing of the three Atlantic City casinos, the 7,000 workers that um, potentially will lose uh, employment, the 40,000 people that will be directly in, uh, affected and the over 100,000 people will be indirectly affected. By the way, our county only has a population of, of just less than 300,000 people. So that's a third of the population that will be impacted. I mean, you, we, when, you, when you begin to put a face to it, we've had a couple of callers call in from the uh, casino workers who would lose their jobs. Uh, Pastor Dixon shared, you know, and, and I've shared um, some real um, uh, situations that pastors face, that churches are facing, that nonprofits are facing, where people are absolutely at their wit's end, no resources, nowhere to go. Some of them are still homeless from Sandy, uh, displaced from Sandy. Now they're losing their jobs and they have nowhere to go. And government has, it's just a big mess. <laughs> so we have got, <laughs> by the way, Pastor Charles Lyles, has, Bishop Charles Lyles has joined us in the studio. We're going to get him, bring him in in a minute. And but um, we have a big mess here. Uh, uh, Bill Hughes. Bill Hughes is here. He's a he's the uh, candidate, Democrat candidate for um, the U.S. Congress, and uh, he's gonna he he has a plan. And I don't put you on the spot, sir. <laughs> <laughs> we, need, we need a plan. <laughs> well, I have an idea. Okay, good. <laughs> I, I have an idea, and uh, it, they're talking about casino gaming in North Jersey. Bad idea. But let's take a look at why Atlantic City is where we are right now. It's because all of the states around us either have casino gaming or are in the process of getting casino gaming. So there are casinos now in Pennsylvania, Maryland, Delaware, Connecticut, Rhode Island. Uh, they're talking about a casino in New York City. Now, Bishop, when we walked in this uh, today, we, you and I were talking about the old bus lots, the, the Creta mm -hmm. bus lots in, in, uh, at the foot of the Atlantic City uh, Expressway that used to be there. And we used to have a thousand buses a day that used to come into Atlantic City. And those were our customers. That was our customer base. And, and those buses are no longer coming because people, people can get casino gaming close to home. Mm. Those were our customers. So um, we need to do, I think, three things. Number one, we need to maximize our existing resources. Number two, we have to diversify our economy. And number three, we have to extend our customer base into new markets. Okay. All right? Now, now, there's one way that we can do this, in my opinion, and that is fu fully exploiting and utilizing the Atlantic City International Airport. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, so far, what, what do we've had? We, we've had we've had Continental, we've had U.S. Air, we've had Air Train, we've had Delta, we've had this message from our from our <laughs> station <laughs> station identification. That's right. um, we've uh, but you know we, we've had all of these these airlines come in and. The one thing that they've had in common is that they've been provided an economic incentive. 
And, and that's why they come here. And then when the economic incentive is gone, they go. They, they go. <laughs> All right, but the, one, but the one airline that has stayed has been Spirit. Spirit. Okay, and, and they, what they have done is that they have never treated Atlantic City as a destination. Well, United is back, just so you know. United is back, yeah, but back. they're here. I flew them here that once a day. There's one fight but, a day out of but, Houston that comes here. But, but, United, but United is here, mm -hmm. but they're here because of an economic incentive. Right. Oh, no, I don't want to interrupt on no, you. No, I'll just no, make a comment for you. But, but they're here because of an economic incentive <laughs> provided by by the Port Authority of New York and New York, New, North Jersey. But the problem is, and you just said this, if you're, if you're going to, can you hear me, guys? I want to yeah. make sure you can hear me. Because if you're going to use, if you're going to have that, you have to use it. Now, I've tried meeting with people in the, whether it be the, what was it, meet AC, go AC, do AC, whatever it is, they're yeah. not doing it. But I've tried <laughs> to meet with them over the last year to let them know I actually was contact, I contacted someone through an email because I, you don't know who to get. About this, I, I, I you know, I, because I travel back and forth a lot from Houston to here, and, and I have people that would like to come here, but the biggest problem they had had was because they had to go to Philadelphia and come here. Now Atlantic City has a direct destination. Well, they don't know that. I fly in on that flight. I can go in there and fly, go to the airport one and a half hours and, and get on that flight without a problem because there's nobody coming here. Mm -hmm. So. Eventually, United is going to pull out if they can't have people coming here. So you have somebody, this meet, go, do, is going to have to meet, go and do something. Do AC must do something. They must do something. And as, and as Bill said, you know. But, right. but, 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 the, but, but the point is, is that we need an airline that's going to treat Atlantic City as an origination point. Right. All right. To, to, not to treat it such as a destination point, but to pass on its savings to its customers. And leave from here. That's why. Uh, that's why uh, Spirit has been here for so long. Now, mm -hmm. that airport. I don't know if people know that. Know this has a ten thousand foot runway. It's one of the largest, that's right. that's right. largest that's right. runways that's right. around. That's right. Okay, so it it is capable of handling the largest airliners ever built. Mm -hmm. And what we should be doing is doing what other gaming jurisdictions are doing. They're looking towards the emerging markets. They're looking towards China. They're looking towards India. We need international service to tap into those markets. Now, the Chinese middle class, 300 million people. That's the size of the United States. These people have money. They want to travel. They want to be entertained. Right now, China is spending uh, $2 billion in, in uh, the Bahamas, about $1.5 billion in Antigua mm -hmm. to build resorts to cater to the Chinese middle class. The Hang Shang Group just inked a multi-million dollar deal with the Ritz in London to fly Chinese high rollers from Beijing to the Ritz in London. Don't forget Jamaica. It, and, 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 yeah, a lot and, of money. And Jamaica. Yeah. That's where we need to be going. Now, if we tap into these markets, we bring these air, we, we, we get an airline to come here that, that treats uh, Atlantic City both as a destination and an origination point. Mm -hmm. Because we have a huge Chinese and Indian population in North Jersey, New York, Connecticut, you know, in the surrounding states. Everybody likes to go home. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Everybody likes to go home. You pass on those savings in the middle class. We have one-tenth the landing fees that they have up in, uh, up, right. up in North Jersey. Okay? So you have a building customer base from the existing population that is here. You, have, you can tap into the, to the Chinese middle, uh, middle class as a potential new customer base. And then on top of that, you, you're flying in these large airplanes that are coming in that have huge cargo holds. And what do you do? You're opening up air cargo right. for the Atlantic City International Airport. Now, you combine that with something called a free trade or foreign trade zone. All right, A foreign trade zone is, is a zone that has reduced and eliminated import and export tariffs so long as manufacturing and assembly is done on site. Mm -hmm. So then you open up the possibility of manufacturing. That's diversifying the economy. Wow. So your your three-point plan uh, or idea is to maximize resources, and one of the resources that you focus in on is the, uh, is the airport. That's correct. And you really talked about, um, which what I've heard you say, is really um, maximizing that, the use of that facility. And it also expands the customer base. Expand for, for Atlantic City. For Atlantic City. And, and reintroduces manufacturing to the area. 
So and thus thus diversifying the economy. Diversifying the economy. Okay. So that's 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 uh, that's interesting. Now, what kind of manufacturing? Because I had this discussion with uh, Dr. Paniciero about the about the real the realistic options. What is the likelihood that this area will attract new or different kinds of industry? And go ahead. You know what? You're you're absolutely right. But you know, you know, Bishop, we already have two f foreign trade zones in the area. Did you know that? No. We have we have one in Cape May County Airport, okay. one in Millville Airport, but they don't have access to the international markets. But already in 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 Millville, you know, we did have something there called Airworks, which was a company that um, that would uh, fly in jet engines from around the world and rehab them and fix them. All right, and and they did that, you know, tariff free. That's a manufacturing business. Okay. We have a company called Tfal, which um, is um, is uh, uh, many people would know Tfal. They make pots and pans, but really they're the GE of France. All right, they're located in in Millville. Right. All right, and they have a manufacturing facility. All right, we're talking about uh, you know you can do it in combination also with the FAA Tech Center. You're talking about you know doing drone research, although there's no federal funding for drones. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you're going to do research without any money, um, but but you can do but you can uh, but you can actually fly in the components uh, for 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 unmanned aerial aircraft or you know mm -hmm. or and just about any other type of industry you're talking about that that would rely upon parts uh, parts from from these emerging markets. With Millville. And or Cape May, find, uh, benefit. Find, they, they would benefit. So they would not find Atlantic City as a direct competitor, and thus having some concerns that this takes away business. They would actually benefit from this because right now they have to rely upon Newark in order for their access to the international markets. Mm. Their 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 raw materials have to come in through another free trade zone, and the closest one for them, you know. True, close one, closest one for them is is Newark. So you know, think you know, think about the distance right. that 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 they're saving mm -hmm. by having the materials flown in or brought in that much closer. Why hasn't this been done? I mean, why? I mean, why hasn't this been done? I, no. That's the question. Well, you know, if you're that familiar well, with it, somebody else is too. Well, 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 th well thank you very much for the setup. <laughs> <laughs> in, in in my opinion. Uh, we have somebody who just doesn't lack, who lacks the, the vision and the energy to make it happen. And that's why I'm running for Congress. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. There you go. Uh, and Roy, what are you, a campaign man? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, sir. Listen, that's, that's, that's good stuff. I, I, we got to continue to talk about that some, uh, Bill. I think that's some good, good stuff. Uh, Bishop Lyles. Yes. Um, we've been talking about um, and trying to focus in on in addition to new ideas, uh, also the human experiences. Now, your ministry in Atlantic City um, has for years been a major uh, resource in the city for people who are in need, from homeless people being fed to all kinds of things happening over there. And so, what what kind of things are you are you experiencing? Are you seeing? And, and where are how are you, are you, are your resources being stretched? Um, what, what's what's happening over there? All of what you've said. <laughs> um, <laughs> Because we see the transition mm -hmm. of who needs to eat, who is homeless. They're, we're feeding people through the Friends of Gene Webster mm -hmm. Corporation that, that are not necessarily homeless, mm -hmm. are not necessarily jobless, but because their, the economy is, is, is skyrocketing. We have people that can't afford to feed themselves. Mm -hmm. So they may be coming from work or going to work from a Friends of Gene Webster, uh, t and because they need to eat, they come there. And and Gene Webster's idea was not just to feed the homeless community, mm -hmm. but anybody that was hungry. Right, that was their philosophy. Yeah. Right, and so and so therefore, uh, we see a lot of that happening uh, even every day there at the church. Uh, uh, one of the things that I've always had a passion for is people that need a hand up. Mm. And so uh, my wife and I often have had more than our biological family living with us. I'm a witness. <laughs> <laughs> because we, we see people in need and nobody seems to help them. Yeah. 
And so this is an issue also because uh, so, so many of our agencies don't have the power to reach people that have slipped through the cracks or they don't have the right credentials. Uh, they're coming from out of state. And so many people that are in Atlantic City came to Atlantic City, I guess, thinking this was a pot of gold. Mm -hmm. And uh, even the ones of us that are here that are trying to live here uh, are struggling because the, the what's going on with the casinos right now. And, and it's, it's evident even with our membership that we have uh, members that have worked at the, in the casino mm -hmm. industry for years. I mean, 20, 25 years and have lost their jobs. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, it's, a, it's affecting the church. At the worst time in their life. Yeah. Some of them are approaching uh, retirement age. And uh, in some instances, the pensions are not the best or have dissipated. That's right. So it's, it's, it's really traumatic. And, and this is important. Of course, you know, as, as Pastor Dixon alluded to earlier, of course, we believe God. And we are, we, we, of course, we believe and trust God. Um, and there are people, elected officials, who make decisions, who direct resources. And that's what politics is really about. It's about who controls resources and how they are dispersed and we are here speaking um, in behalf of those the least of these and we are making an appeal because of course there are many folk who advocate for you know other other demographics but the folk who are the most needy at the bottom uh, the church really has to be the voice for them and that's why we're making this uh, this appeal. Yes. Bishop you're absolutely correct and they've uh, constantly said that the true moral test of any government is how it treats its weakest of citizens. Not those who won't, those who can't. Mm -hmm. And and now is a time where we're going to see the true colors That's right. of our of our governmental institutions. That's right. Because uh, people are hurting out there. And you know, yes. we were Bishop, you know, we were talking, my parish is right down the street from yours. That's right. And um, you know, we used to have a food bank that was open two times a month. The story I hear that story repeatedly from ministries who have food banks or who, who, who feed people. They say we can't, we just, we just can't do it as often as we like to. We're, we open our doors and we are wiped out right away. So we got some real challenges. So, um, and Bishop Lyle, I don't know you were not here when I mentioned earlier about uh, wanting to. Um, I'm, I'm asking pastors to uh, sign on with me and to and to help support an effort that we are organizing to make an appeal to our legislature in regards to CRDA's um, resources and funding.